Hey all, a little extra this week, a conversation that I had with Joseph Edelheit, my friend and my rabbi. He was in Minneapolis, currently living in Brazil, but he was in Minneapolis this week, and we got together. And so here's an installment of the occasional and in the other chair video stream that I also released to all of you as an extra podcast. Thanks for listening. If you enjoy the podcast, and I sure hope you do, a couple things you could do to be um, an encouragement and helpful, tell your friends about it. And if anybody ever asks on Facebook, like, hey, what podcast are you listening to? You know, give it a mention. And also, I have a Patreon site going, which is a chance for you as listeners to the podcast to help make new podcasts available. It's a cash donation site, Patreon. You can find it by going to DougPaget.com, and then you'll see a link for it right there at the top. If you don't know where it is already, but if you're already on Patreon, head on over there, look me up, and $5 a month, $10 a month, a dollar a month, something like that will be a great help to making all this possible. So enjoy Rabbi Joseph. And thanks for listening to the podcast. Joseph Edelheit, Doug Padgett, and in the other chair, Doug Padgett. This is the live stream that's also a podcast, unlike the podcast, which is also a live stream. You try to figure out the difference. This is Rabbi Joseph Edelheit. I refer to Rabbi Joseph as my rabbi, so thank you for being my rabbi. Thank you. A pastor and a rabbi. And uh, um, we, we just had an afternoon together. We did. A couple of, couple of drinks and um, a great time. So you are working on a, a new project, and uh, I want people to, to know about it and, and what you're doing. So you're going to launch your voice into the world. I am. In some new ways. You, you gave me an amazing gift for which uh, gratitude will uh, be profound for a long time. Good. Somewhere in between, we are living at a time of too much certainty and not enough ambiguity. We're uh, unable to engage because the divisions are too deep and too wide. Mm -hmm. And I have for a long time believed that somewhere in between, not in the center, that this is not about being moderate, as it were, Mm -hmm. but somewhere in between. That's where the dialogue (laughs) happens. That's where uh, we learn new things. Uh, the years I've been part of Solomon's Porch, uh, the opportunities to learn that the stereotypes about evangelicals mm-hmm. are as dangerous mm. as the stereotypes about Jews. Wow. So <clears throat> That's gracious of you, but I'm not sure it's, uh, it carries the same power, but thank you. Uh, somewhere in between. We're limited... We're incomplete, we're unfinished, hmm. we are literally yeah. somewhere in between. And, and this, you made a little, ca- a little note there that this doesn't mean being moderate. No. So it doesn't mean, don't be fully this way, don't be fully that way, find yourself in the middle of ideas, of suggestions. You, you have a, the thing you've helped me to realize is, the way you be somewhere in between is to be fully you, in relationship with others different than yourself that are fully them. That's the only way you actually get in between. That's this, right. This halfway across the road business. Is... No, it's not halfway. Yeah. Uh, we're born and we're going to die. Those two are certain. <laughs> I don't think there's much else in life that I can confirm hmm. is certain. Hmm. And we're always between our births and our deaths somewhere in between. Hmm. Uh, Think of Ecclesiastes 3, uh, best covered by the birds, Uh, (laughs) and uh, before the birds, uh, you know, I I think Judy Collins did the the best cover. Yeah. Turn, turn, turn. Turn, turn, turn. That's that's not an original uh, birds? No, no, they were covering it. They, They were covering it. There is a season for everything. Hmm. And, and I think that's 
one of the reasons that biblical passage, mm-hmm. yeah. those nine verses yeah. in Ecclesiastes 3, it takes every possible experience. There is a time to be born and mm. a time to die. Uh, where mm. where are we today? Mm. And over our beers, we talked about the issues around the current presidency. Yeah, uh, We've talked about Messianic Jews. Um, two things that rile both of us up. Wow. But they're both realities. Yeah. We're, we're not going to be able to dismiss them, mm-hmm. push them aside. Mm-hmm. We have to engage yes, them. Yes, yes. And, and I've been, one of the reasons I'm so excited about what you're wanting to do, and getting your voice out in some new ways, and in, in this particular somewhere in between project, especially, uh, and, and re narrating what a, a faithful spiritual life would look like. What, one of the, I'm going to caveat my caveat for a minute, which people who listen to this stuff are like, there he goes again. But he, he, it's not every person's experience with Judaism that where they hear the Jewish teacher talk about spirituality, the spirituality of humanity and the human experience the way you do. For Thank a lot you. of Christians especially, they their connection to Jewish teachers is factual stuff. Yeah, no, no, we're not not dealing with factoids. Yes. We're we're dealing with the experience of being alive. Yeah. And let let's ask this question. They were uh, selling an Anne Frank Halloween costume. No. Yes. What? Yes. So for those who might not know. Anne Frank, uh, the Diary of Anne Frank, one uh, of the most significant uh, personal statements about a uh, young person in the show of the Holocaust. Uh, she would eventually die in one of the extermination camps. So what do you think about that? Is, yeah. is that cultural appropriation? Is that just bad taste? Is that entrepreneurial stupidity? Hmm. I can't even like. I'm I'm rarely found without without a, a suggestion of how one could think. I can't imagine a situation in which you would suggest that a Halloween costume. I mean, maybe one of the great heroes of 20th century, but that that is. Uh, it's just, I can't even consider it. Um, how do you think about that as someone who, for whom the Holocaust has been... For, for a lot of us, the Holocaust is a historic fact. For some, it's a, of course, a piece of fake news. But for any reasonable person, it is a historic fact. But the number of times I've been with you, I've, I'm reminded it's, it's a present reality for you. Uh, it's a present I, memory. I have... A significant number of numbers of my extended family who perished in three death camps. Yeah, uh, I was born November eleventh, nineteen forty-six. I consider that a birth date of happenstance. Hmm. Had Hitler been able to reach his goal, there would have been no Jews. Hmm. The number six million is a number of happenstance. Wow. So if you're born after Auschwitz, uh, well, luck, hmm. fate, uh, you have a different burden. Hmm. Uh, I've, never, so, I've never asked you this. Can I interrupt and ask you this question? Sure. How were you, how, from what you know, how were your parents thinking about the need to have children in the middle 1940s? They they were in the United States. Uh, Yes. So my birth father uh, was a pilot in Europe. uh, And I'm sure when he came back, the context of having a child Hmm. was very much anchored in his experience of war. Mm -hmm. Uh, Not sure, never talked to my mother, Hmm. who was a very secular, non-observant Jew. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm not sure 
1945. I was born in, in November 46. Um, I'm not sure people hmm. had taken the experience oh. of the camps That's and then begun to say, well, do you think we should add hmm. Jews? Hmm. Um <clears throat> We're we're living in a in a perverse moment, hmm. in which the president of the United States uh, is known through a reality TV show, which is of course oxymoronic because there was nothing reality yeah. in in the nature. Yeah, this is what a reality TV show looks like. This exactly. We're in. Yeah. So, the fact that we can now twist in Frank. Wow. Yeah, I mean, is it camp? Is it kitsch? What, what is? Who did that? Yeah. Do you want to be at the table where they were talking about it and ask the people, R- really? Hmm. Um. <clears throat> so I was, we 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 got a bit onto that because I, uh, you your idea of getting your voice out, which I think is so important, fits in this scope of helping people. To be in between, but not in the middle. I want them to understand that we're all limited. Hmm. Being human is about learning how to live with your limits. Mm-hmm. So, off the fly, let's deal with this question of how would I explain to someone that wearing a costume of someone who died. <laughs> in Bergen-Belsen is appropriate is not the word I would use. Inappropriate is not WTF. What what are we doing here? Yeah. But every single day we wake up and we're confronted. Mm -hmm. Harvey Weinstein, Mm -hmm. the president arguing with the widow, yeah. Of a serviceman who died. Yeah. And and I think people are disengaging, Doug. Hmm. And so they don't want to be somewhere in between. They'll pick yeah. this side or that side where they're certain. Yeah. I certainly feel I mean I feel that. I have a high level of commitment to be engaged and I feel the pull to just cluster up and I don't need safety. this anymore. Yeah, I don't need this hassle anymore. Yeah. And and when the world is confronted by as much unexpected hmm. and unknown, hmm. Zika. Hmm. Okay, I live in Brazil I now. I totally forgot about Zika. It okay, was, it was I before live in November Brazil. 8th, 2016. Right. And it, it's still serious. Really? Oh, sure. Huh. So, do you bathe yourself in in the deepest port part of mosquito repellent, hmm. or do you not walk through the forest? Hmm. And you, that, that feels to you like the choice people feel like they're having to make? Pretty much about everything. About everything, yeah. The, the monuments are going to stay up, hmm. and if you're white, then you have to deal with the embarrassment and shame of Robert E. Lee, hmm. Or Lake Calhoun, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, what? Well, where did we get either or? Yeah. When, when, did you get the email that life was going to become either or? I didn't. I missed that note. Yeah. But isn't that right? Uh, this is a bit of a setup question, softball question for you. It, isn't that basically religion's argument, be it Judaism or Christianity or Islam, other official doctrinal oriented and practice based religions? That there's some either or that you're you're either in or you're out you're this or you're that, but our adult children aren't that. Yeah. The people we pastor to, mm-hmm. no matter what our connection with an institution, I don't know anybody's life. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Is either or. Yeah. I know a lot of scenarios mm. and scripts. That are either or. Hmm. But I I know a lot of people are caught by circumstances, 
Uh, Eve, I, I sent you Eve's photos. Your daughter. From yeah. the hurricane. Um, she's, a, she's a photographer in Florida, South Florida. Tampa Bay Times. Yeah. Uh, she was in shelters working during Irma. Hmm. Left her home, uh, her mother, her husband, uh, in a shelter. The paper sent her out. Wow. I'm in Rio texting her. Yeah. Dad, I'm working. Are you okay? I'm working. (laughs) (laughs) But it was terrifying. Uh, Could you be objective as a journalist Mm. covering a hurricane in which the new house you bought was threatened? Wow. Mm. So this project you're working on wants to help people see the biblical narrative, Jewish biblical narrative, in a way that becomes useful for these times. This, uh, this in between this space, you say, is uh, that, that's not a new project no. of the 21st century. This no. is an ancient human project. And, and I think the biblical text affords us a profound example in six classic biblical figures, Hmm. each of whom, and as pairs, represents the fact that the biblical text wants us to take seriously nobody has it all. Hmm. No no perfect tense. No Nadia Kamenich. Hmm. It's a great reference. Because she got, she was the first, she was the first figure skater, right? To get all, to get all. Not, not a, not a figure skater, a uh, gymnast. Oh, gym, a gymnast, yes. And <laughs> Two years in. Uh, within ninety minutes, there was another perfect ten. Really? Yeah. Even from the Russian judges. Yeah. So it's for you, Donald Trump. The really. Yeah. Right. <laughs> There's a bit of inflated judgment Rook, at the time. I mean, <laughs> and and so if. We've moved from 1976, oh, nice. where the perfect tens are. Yeah, people expect tens wow. now. That's fine. So I hadn't put that together. I didn't know there were two actually yeah. back to back. I knew that not a company. Wasn't the movie with Bo Derek Ten also yeah. created at that time? Yeah, there was like a zeitgeist going on about that kind of perfection narrative, and wasn't there? It is accessible. Wow. And. We want our kids to get tens. Wow. Like you're noticing a, a, a 35, 40 year arc. Yes. That has really infiltrated generations of people. And now huh. you're not really engaged hmm. if you say, well, I, I don't think you have to be perfect. Hmm. So in the biblical texts, who are the six characters that you. Abraham and Rachel. Patriarchal, matriarchal, okay. Moses and Miriam, mm-hmm. the heart of the matter, as it were, the prophetic, mm. and David and Esther, mm-hmm. the the two monarchs, the and two monarchs, King David, yeah. Queen Esther. Yeah, that's great. Do people talk? Is is that a common Jewish phrase to refer to them, or is that is that an Edelheitism? It it might be an Edelheitism. I love that. I, it yeah. might be. Uh, and over drinks, you were saying it's uh, God, Torah, and Israel. Abraham the and Rebecca. three defining characteristics wow. of biblical and then rabbinic Judaism: God, Torah, revelation, yeah, revelation, Moses, and, and Israel, mm-hmm. the people and the land. The people, yeah. So then you have the monarch and the. Okay, so Abraham gives us monotheism, God. Mm-hmm. The first person to intuit mm-hmm. God. And uh, Moses and Miriam provide us revelation. They bring the people out mm. for the purpose of going to Mount Sinai. Mm. And both are denied entrance into the land. Huh. Neither go into the land. And that's a big deal in, your, in your, your way of seeing these stories. Each one is missing something. David and Esther don't have God. King David is not allowed to build the temple. Mm-hmm. The book of Esther is one of two books, doesn't mention God. Hmm. 
And, and th those six narratives start to tell you that there's a connection. Th th there's a connection between those. I don't how, think it's coincidental. How humanity should see itself. We need to embrace mm. the limits, the unfinished, and the imperfect. The limits in Abraham, the unfinished in the in in all land, six. In all six, huh? In in biblical Hebrew, the word "perfect" refers to the past tense. Hmm. Imperfect is the future tense. Oh come on, really? Yes. <laughs> like is that just a que acute linguistic no, happening? No, it or is that's what fantastic. the tenses are called. That the past you can talk about the almost as if you could talk about the past in some sense in which because it was it's finished. It was perfect. Wow. It's finished. The word perfect means to complete something. Huh. We think of perfect as flawless. Uh-huh. I don't think my life is going to be perfect until the instant after my last breath. Huh. Finished. Finished. So imperfection is it's still in the making. It's still in the doing. Incomplete. Is that Needleheitism, or is that a is that a classic? I, I, I think it's a a way of. It's great. The deriving from what I would like to call my contemporary midrash. Hmm. That this is what I've been working on, and what today you're urging me yeah. to put out there to get to get in the internet every yeah. way possible. The the narrative that that is. That is re really rings as as good news for people in their humanity. You needed to get that in the good news. Well, what I wanted to do, <laughs> you see, I should we should also mention that you have a doctorate in Christian studies. Yeah. So I'm not going to slide a good news or <laughs> I can slide a good news by Edelite. He's going to grab that one in a minute. Uh, there's a lot of people. The reason I bring this up, who might pay attention to my stream, and and podcast, for whom good news. This acceptance without perfection business, oh, that's a Jesus innovation, they would mm -hmm. argue. And that, because you know how Christians tend to do this, the bad news is the Jewish scriptures, the yeah. Old Testament, and then the good news comes. And so for a Jew, you, you've been proclaiming a kind of good news all along. And this is, this is the good news. And, and the difference between us is the not yetness, uh -huh. the completedness. Mm -hmm. Well, when is your good news going to be complete there, Doug? Yeah. <laughs> the back at you. Second coming. Yeah, that's that that's that's what creates that that whole narrative, isn't it? That that that's a uh, that there's another thing we're all waiting for. And and it comes at the end mm. when all this other labeling process mm. won't matter. Mm. It's really good. Thanks. See, this is why you should all know about Rabbi Joseph Edelheit, soon to be the greatest sensation on well, YouTube and Facebook that, and all the places. Uh, thank you for being my rabbi. Thank you, friend. Thank you for being my friend and my teacher. Well, there you have it. Wasn't that a gem? Thanks for listening all the way to the end. And head on over there to that Patreon site or to DougBadgett.com. You can watch the video. It explains why I want you to chip in a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars a month toward the podcast. Thanks again. Gonna get a lot this week. There's gonna be two more podcasts coming your way, including Untrumped Part Four. See you.